In this tutorial, I am going to discuss test case and test scenario templates. First, we will start with test scenario and in the next video, you will find me explaining the test case template. Right here, I have this test scenario for our application, GMO Online. This is the website under test, under manual test. GMO Online is basically a demo website from Borland. As you can see, uh, it has basically a catalog for some random products. And we are going to do find out how the process goes for placing the order up to the shopping cart and then billing it and closing the order. So as you can see there are plenty of elements for our test like say logos text and other elements on the page we are going to click on enter gmo online button then we have this catalog let's just put the order quantity here place order once you go there you will see the place order page and click on proceed order Let's type some random stuff. Um, this application takes valid data for state, zip and phone. So make sure that you have valid data there. Choose Visa or MasterCard then use 16 digit card number then expiry as of this month then click on ship to place the order as you can see we have got this receipt now okay so let's see what we have here is our traceability matrix or you can say test scenario template this is a template on which we are going to write the test cases so first field in our test temp test scenario template is requirement ID this is very important as this is the ID that we are going to match with the test scenario ID and test case ID requirements that you can collect while uh, you have you have client specifications or clients requirement these are usually in our mm, documents, business uh, specification documents or client specification documents. Uh, so each requirement will have specific information in requirement specification and scenario ID, then scenario objective, then test condition ID, test condition description and test technique used. As you know, uh, requirement if plainly d discussed then it will have requirement I requirement based technique if you are testing uh, inputs based on say boundary values or equivalence partition then respective test technique is used as, as you can see I have one such condition here where order quantity has a limit from 0 to 99 where you can use boundary value analysis Similarly, you can use equivalence partition in some other conditions for credit cards or similar other tests. So, whenever you are going to write a scenario, first thing you have to write is requirement ID. You have to map it with your business specifications. If your organization is giving you full freedom to use um, your own requirement ID or if it is auto generated for you then that is well and good after that scenario requirement and test condition follow along each other with this same increment after that test condition description is basically the description that you're going to write about uh, your test condition based on which your test cases are written 
for example let's say uh, on front page you have let's say enter gmo online website button so you have to write test condition for that should be click with this button or let's say what you see on your front page etc etc these are basically the condition that you need to write so as to verify that particular interface of the website in our requirement we want it to open with the help of link then we'll write condition based on that and the technique we'll use will be requirement based when we are verifying user interface we are going to write the scenario verify user interface of GMO application which is this then we have to write respect to test condition right so that is pretty much it and um, let me revise it again when you write test scenario template for your manual test or you say when you write test scenario um, you write requirement ID specification scenario ID scenario objective test condition test condition description test technique used these are the important fields for IEEE 829 standard as well you can add additional fields but depending on your organization you can follow the format from IEEE 829 or go with your own standards of organization I hope this tutorial help uh, we'll see more such manual testing videos in future uh, sessions